Okay, so I wanted to do a video on this because this guy, basically, I agree with the idea that transgender people are, in their own way, uh, med mentally, um, L, mentally suffering from something, but his problem isn't that. And I want to get to this video, so, guys, let's watch. Today we cancel the publication called Scientific American. Now, the Scientific American has been around for a very long time, uh, since the mid-1800s, in fact. It's one of the very oldest media outlets in the country. And for much of that run, it was considered credible and reputable, uh, a trustworthy source for science-related news. A great number of famous scientists have written articles for it over the years. Even Albert Einstein can be counted among its contributors. But those days are over. Albert Einstein is long dead, and if he were not dead today, he would wish he was, because the far-left religious cult has infiltrated and corrupted nearly everything in society, especially the media and the field of science. So if you combine those two things in a scientific media outlet, you're sure to get the worst of both worlds. And that is certainly the case with Scientific American. Case in point, this week the outlet de uh, debuted the, uh, the second episode in their docu-series titled A Question of Sex. In a tweet thread about the series, Scientific American makes clear that the purpose of the documentary is to debunk the myth of the two sexes. The myth, they say. Yes, sexual dimorphism, one of the most fundamental concepts in human biology and something that no credible scientists anywhere in the world ever in history have ever questioned is now a myth. In an article on the website about the documentary... I will say that it's not a myth, but saying that people who are born both do not exist is incorrect, too. It's explained that the sex binary is false because of the existence of intersex people. We're told, quote, Intersex is an umbrella term for variations in reproductive or sexual anatomy that may appear in a person's chromosomes, their genitals, or internal organs, and it has been estimated to include about 1.7% of the population. There are more than 30 medical terms for different combinations of sex traits that fall outside of the typical male and female paths of development. Now, the article goes on to explain that the alleged existence of these 1.7% of internet intersex people throws the whole notion of the sex binary into question. The article ends with a quote from a, a so-called intersex activist named Sean Sypha Wall, and it says, After all, the fixation on a sex binary in science, Wall points out, doesn't occur in a vacuum. Quote, I think for people asking the question, is your child a boy or a girl, I would really challenge them to just take a moment and ask, why? Why is it so important? Are you just happy to have a baby? Are you just happy to start a family? I think those are quality of life questions that often get overlooked or missed in this conversation. Yes, why do you care if your child is a boy or a girl? Why do you care if your child is human? Why do you care about any- So, basically to you, you think someone who isn't born male <laughs> is basically someone who isn't born human, right? Because you're acting like boy or girl, they're so different that they're basically human versus animal. Do you really think he's saying that the males are animals and the women, the females, are animals? I mean, are humans? No. He's saying it the other way around. This is what's so stupid about women who side with him. And side with this idea, because this is the same idea that subjugates you. You call for, you cry for, you scream for, you advocate for the very thing that oppresses you. And this is the thing with this. You know, the transgender people are not looking to um, help women not be oppressed by men. It is, that's not what they're trying to do. In fact, they're trying to oppress women further by their misogynist view of women. And this goes for both sides. There is misogyny when it comes to female-born individuals who are identifying as males. And there is misogyny. When it comes to people who are male-born and identifying as women, um, 
So, I mean, like, it's misogyny both ways. The reason why it's misogyny is because gender in itself, the construct itself, was made to oppress women. So, in gender itself, it's meld in misogyny. It's meld in the idea that women are all these things that men claim women are without ever even being a damn woman. And somehow... They're supposed to know and tell us how we're supposed to behave, what a woman is like, how she socializes, how she feels, how she thinks of things, how she speaks. You know, everything is supposed to be basically scripted for a woman. And it's always been that way throughout society and society's history that it's always been where women were scripted to follow a certain role and it was never to benefit women it was always to benefit these males and he is no different okay he is one of those who thinks that he wants to continue this idea he wants to continue it because he wants to benefit from it he feels like when we do not have a gender construct system that means he doesn't get to benefit off a gender construct system because if there is none what is he benefiting off of that is what his thing is and that's why male to female is the same as being human or not human that's what he's saying here it's quite obvious now I'm going to get further into this because he's, he's really letting us in on what his real problem is. It's not about body positivity. It's not about mental illness. It is not about mutilating your body while being trans. Which, you know, I am not in favor of what transgender people do to their bodies. But this video here shows you exactly what he is and how it's got nothing to do with that. Let's continue. Give the basic physical details of your child. Why can't you raise and parent him as if he was a, 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 an ambiguous, nondescript lump of sentient matter? Pretend that The problem with that thought process is this, and it's sad because this is a father to somebody, a father to someone who isn't male, but the problem with this is you really mean to tell me you see your daughters in a different view. You raise your daughters in a different view, in a lesser view, in a lesser expectation of your daughters because they are female. See, the view of females is all fucked up with this individual, where he thinks, oh, it's such a different thing because it's a female child. When a female child is still a child, it's still a human. She's still a human child, just like a male child is. But for you, you think that you want to basically raise your child in a sense of subjugation without even really knowing your child quite yet. And this is the exact reason why males subjugated white males, for example. Uh, this would happen with any other race of male, by the way. But this is why white males subjugated their daughters, disenfranchised their daughters, and set them up for failure for longer periods of time than their former black male slaves. That's why, because they stereotype their children before they even know their children's names. Because the gender matters so much because it creates value and lack of value. That's the thing. And you can see this with male people, that they see value in males and they see lack of value with females. 
This is why they have such an issue with females in certain regards. You won't see that with females in the same regard to males, but males have this sort of pathology towards females. They do. And I'm not saying all males. I'm saying males like this. Now continue. Well, Jazzy's was full of colorful photos, Sorry a big about smile, this. It's a you know, exceeding that optimism. Undescript lump of sentient matter. Pretend that he's just an amorphous puddle of cells and DNA. That's all that matters. Makes perfect sense. No, but there's way more to a female child, your daughter, than just her sex. You're thinking that her sex defines her. That's what I mean. Like I said, I've said this before. Certain people act like if you don't have male genitalia, you don't matter, basically. Like, you're... You have something lacking just because you have a different arrangement in your genitalia than a male. Now, let's get to the next A clip one. from the documentary provides more um, completely imaginary, by the way, details. Let's watch. While gendered social structures are ancient, a binary framework of biological sex didn't actually exist in Western culture until the late 18th century. Exactly. Before, science recognized only one sex, the male and considered the female body an inferior version of it. The shift that historians called, as he pointed out himself, the two-sex model served mainly to reinforce gender and racial divisions by tying social status to the body. Okay, so let's go over a few things here. First of all, we must always keep in mind that the only reason anybody ever talks about intersex so you see how he just skipped over the whole thing of how he views males as more as superior to females and as females as lesser. <laughs> you that's what I'm saying with this whole situation. It's not about the transgenders. It's not. To me, the bigger issue of this whole video is the fact that you're viewing people as having value or lack of value based off the basis of if they have male genitalia or if they are female genitalia. That's what's wrong here. It's not about transgenders. It's about the fact that you're a misogynist. And I understand that a lot of people are like having issues with the transgender movement because who wouldn't? Any sane person can see there's a problem here and that these people are mentally ill. That they don't even see the trees for the forest, basically. Because they don't see that there's a misogynist man right before you who is literally saying that women are inferior. He agrees. He was kind of like trying to skip over the fact that he sees it that way, too. He sees males as important and females as a lesser important sex. The only purpose of a female in the gender construct was always to serve the male. This bothers the gender construct when a male-born person takes the roles of the female sex individual because it specifically says by birth, you have a birthright of being superior to females. So that's the issue. It's not about body mutilation. It's not about self-esteem. It's not about body positivity with this person. It just isn't. Continue. Is to validate transgenderism. That's the only reason Scientific American is running this series. It's the only reason... They jam intersex onto the pride flag. It's the only reason they include intersex in the LGBT alphabet soup. Intersex. That is a distraction. You just started talking about intersex people when they were specifically talking about the differences between how females were viewed and males were viewed because you know you have the same view as what was originally stated. Now on to the intersex people. I just want to point out this. Um, no, that's not true at all, because the transgender people, on average, and you can see this with plenty of intersex people's experience, they get a lot of jealousy from the transgender community. One, because of the surgeries. A lot of transgender people wish they could have had surgery as a baby. 
and the fact that intersex people are mutilated at birth, it, they fetishize that. Mutilation at birth, basically. Now, the second thing is, transgender people generally have a problem. And you can see this all over the place, where trans women will have an issue with female people. There's a jealousy. And this is a part of um, just, you know, a thing of, I think transgender people sometimes tend to have jealousy towards the sex they want to be. Um, with trans women, they tend to be more aggressive because they are of the male sex. Um, so you can see it more and they do show it more. Um, and... They tend to have a jealousy towards the intersex people because they are female too. So you can't say that the intersex and the transgender are together. You're just making that up because what you're trying to say here is that both people make you uncomfortable because it murks the waters of the hierarchy, the gender hierarchy. You don't like intersex people because it messes with your hierarchy. You don't like transgender people because it messes with your hierarchy. You want the sexes separate and for there not to be equality because you don't see the sexes as equal. So that's your problem. It is not about body mutilation. It is not about basically, you know, not loving oneself. It's not about the mental health of transgender people. That's not what it is. What your problem is, is that you just want to keep certain things where you are benefited as a male. That's all that is. And that's just so piggish and disgusting, honestly. I just don't like people like this. But anyway, continue. This is a medical condition that has nothing to do with LGBT. But it's included and in fact given pride of place simply because people who suffer from this particular genetic deformity are useful to the trans agenda. And then he goes on to try to call intersex people deformed. Okay, let's actually, let's actually... Focus on this. You mean to tell me you sitting here as a fucking mutant with a mutation on your DNA. You are missing half of a fucking chromosome because you are a man. It's the truth. You are. You're a fucking mutant. And you're here trying to call someone deformed. Dude, know your place. Just being completely honest here. That you have no place to be calling anybody deformed simply because you don't like how they were God made their body any more than anyone else has a way to tell you that you're a mutant. You know what I mean? Even though you are a mutant. But if someone calls you deformed, you could say this is how your body was made, right? That was how your natural body was made. It was made to be a mutant. You know, it's true. The Y chromosome is a mutant. Um, it's a mutation. Um, so, I mean, like, that, to me, is just kind of like, how are you going to sit here and be calling people deformed simply because they were born both sexes? It also goes back to the whole idea. This is a deep-rooted idea. It's not a deep-rooted idea, but a deep-rooted thought of males, okay? This is not just pertaining to intersex people. He's saying they're deformed because they're part female. It's not because they're part male. It's because they're part female. Reason I say this is because long ago, the history of how people viewed female bodies was actually in the idea that women, female bodies, were deformed. That was the idea. The idea was that the female body was deformed, as he said before even in the um, part earlier. It was saying basically, you know, similar things of that nature. I've read the history of how people viewed people who weren't born completely male were 
the idea of them being deformed because they were part female or fully female. So female bodies were perceived as deformed. And he's saying deformed here right now. You see what I mean? He is of the old mindset. And that's what I don't like about him. Is that he is of the old mindset that he thinks that female sex individuals are inferior. As if they are not human. That he thinks that female individuals, fully female people, are deformed. Our bodies are deformed because we're female. That's what I'm trying to address here. That's why he's calling intersex people deformed. That's why he's alluding to the idea of male and female being different as much as humans to animals. You know he's not saying that he's an animal. You know who he's saying is lesser. You know who he's saying is an animal. It's just true and it's just obvious. And I don't understand, that's my issue. Like I support channels who are against transgender people transitioning and encouraging them to try another alternative. I am, I'm all for that, but I'm not for thinking that one sex is better than the other. And I can tell this is that type of individual. And the audacity of a mutant like him thinking that females were less than him or deformed when the only one deformed is him. Anyway, continue. Never mind that trans and intersex have nothing in common and that the existence of intersex people does not even come close to validating the claims and self-perceptions of trans people, but it's important. I will agree with that. No, it doesn't. Intersex people have nothing at all to do with transgender people, but I will say this, actually. It is actually in opposition to transgender people's existence. Transgender people want to destroy their bodies. That's just the truth. They do. They want to take as many hormones and plastic surgery to mask their natural sex. While an intersex person has this done to them without their consent by other people as they are growing children, um, un, like children, babies who are not conscious of what's going on, um, being taken advantage of, being coerced into this type of stuff, coerced by the sex binary itself, which doesn't acknowledge these people when we should acknowledge their existence when they exist, they exist. It doesn't mean that we need more people to identify as intersex. That What does that even have to do with anything? If someone doesn't think that they're a certain gender or whatever. Transgender people are mentally ill, in my opinion. But intersex people are not. And there should be a place for intersex people. People should acknowledge that they exist. And we should have a society that accepts their existence and does not push them to be either sex when they're both. Just acknowledge them for what they are. Just like you acknowledge a male for being a male. Acknowledge a female for being a female. It's quite easy. But your simple mutant brain can't comprehend that. I don't understand why they're talking about intersex at all. Because then it makes sense um, why they lie about it so much. For instance, in the passage from the article that we read, they say 1.7% of people are intersex. Now, if you're a person with common sense, you hear that figure and you feel immediately skeptical. 1.7%? Actually, it's more than that. But I'm going to show you two different types of conditions that can show you that the percentage is honestly higher than the 1.7 percent but let's go really i mean that's still a minority percentage wise but that would translate to like six million people in this country alone are there really six million intersex people walking around in this country well no that number is a lie because everything these people say is a lie they lie with abandon 
about everything all the time. Colin Wright looked into... Not true. It is actually a lie what you're saying. See, there are percentages of people who actually have much more cases of being intersex actually than 1.7%. You're trying to minimize intersex people because you're not happy with the fact that they exist. <laughs> this, uh, this subject a couple of years ago and discovered that the 1.7% figure comes from a book written by a woman named Anne Fausto Sterling who had an ideological axe to grind. She wanted to disprove the sex binary, and she did it by wildly inflating the number of intersex people that exist in the world. Reading from Wright's column, it says, they broadly define an intersex person as, quote, an individual who deviates from the platonic ideal of physical dimorphism at the chromosomal, genital, gonadal, and hormonal levels. To arrive at their 1.7% figure, they asked how frequently humans deviate from this platonic ideal. In the review... Their ideal male is defined as somebody with XY chromosomes, functional testes located in the scrotal sac, a penis between 2.5 and 4.5 centimeters at birth, and a completely enclosed urethra that opens at the tip. The ideal male must also have testes that produce malarian inhibiting factor as well as testosterone and um, dihydrotestosterone. There we go. And juvenile testicular activity must result in typical masculizing puberty. Their ideal female has two X chromosomes, functional ovaries that result in normal feminizing puberty, intact oviducts attached to a functional uterus, cervix, and vaginal canal. The ideal female must also have labia minora and majora present and a clitoris that ranges from 0.2 centimeters and 0.85 centimeters in length at birth. Okay. You see the problem, hopefully. No, there isn't. For the um, clitoral size that you're saying and the penile size... There's a reason for that, because it's saying, basically, if you have that trait, there might be a reason why it's called, st say, for example, you have androgen and sensitivity syndrome on a low level, then your penis might be a micro penis because of the low, low androgen, um, low ability to actually um, process androgen. So that's why they're saying that. Same thing with a larger clitoris might be that you are exposed to androgen. And you might be exposed to androgen for several reasons that have to do with you being intersex. Then, of course, chromosomally. Now, chromosomally, this is what I really want to get into. So, here we go. So, I wanted to show this in the video just to show people that, yeah, um, no, there's actually... A very high percentage of people who have an intersex trait or intersex condition. Um, for one, to be specific, with chimerism, it is hypothesized to be as high as 10%. If you know what chimerism is, well, that is the combination of two twins fusing to make one at conception. So what that means is that a person would be the combination of their brother, if they're maybe a man themselves, or their sister, if they're a woman themselves, or their brother or sister while being the opposite sex, right? Well, that's about 25-50% of the chance um, of happening basically. Um, some rates have said that among this condition alone, you would have about up to 5% of people with XX and XY chromosomes, but appearing to be one sex or the other sex. So, now it's nonsense when people try and say that intersex conditions and intersex people are rare. It's not. This condition alone lets you know that people can have chromosomes that imply that they're both sexes. I think that in these situations too, um, 
these type of people, like the person um, previously, the mutant, he specifically would be too simple-minded to even comprehend what intersex is, okay? And I want to really address this because it's really weird. They'll talk about, like, penis or vagina as if if you have just a penis or you have just a vagina, then that negates you from being intersex or both sexes. When they also will claim that you can't change your sex. Okay, keep that in mind. Also, while many people will claim that life starts at conception, I'm of the idea that life does start at conception. I am a conservative. I don't get, if life starts at conception, you mean to tell me, you think that someone at conception has a penis or a vagina? You think that someone at conception has sex organs. Like, if you looked it up, you would already know they don't. So you're basically saying that it only matters when they're born, right? Penis or vagina, right? So basically, for their sex, it only matters when they're born. But at the same time, you're still saying life starts before they're born. You see how that doesn't make any sense? This is why, for me, I'm very clear and concise with this whole situation. I think that life starts at conception. I think sex starts at conception. So if you were by your sex, your chromosomes, which is the only sex-determining trait a person has at conception, um, if you're both sexes at conception, then you're both sexes. There's no way to go around it. If you don't have XX or XY chromosomes, then you're both sexes. Um, these people that I am referring to here would have both sexes. They wouldn't just have male sex or female sex at conception. And this condition itself would be up to 5% alone. So saying that the intersex conditions in general are not as popular or as uh, as common as you know 1.7 percent that's actually pretty limited honestly and the reason it's limited is because most of the time people do not get diagnosed with chimerism because there's no medical reason to diagnose people one, if you are functionally able to perform as one sex or the other. And because medical, the medical community doesn't like to diagnose people with intersex conditions. If you have a, an organization that doesn't want to acknowledge or diagnose people with any condition, they will find other reasons to associate their symptoms with something totally different. That's just what it is, you know. And it's just like people like you who don't like intersex people existing. But that doesn't change anything. <laughs> it's still, like I said, the percentages of people who are actually intersex is way more than 2%. That's just a guesstimate. There's another condition here, too. You were trying to say that the amount of people with intersex conditions were 0.02% or something like that. This condition right here, Kleinfelter syndrome, which these people at conception were not XX and they were not XY, so that would go into the idea of being intersex. I know you guys get so confused when you think penis or vagina, even though someone with XXY chromosomes can have a vagina or a penis or anything in between. Um, there have been plenty of cases where females have had X, XY chromosomes and males with XXY chromosomes. The thing is, when females have it, it's less likely to be detected because 
if their Y is dysfunctional in one way or another, the XX chromosomes start to function as XX in females. So there's nothing that would come up in their lives where they would have to be karyotype tested. Therefore, nobody knows that they're XXY. Um, but anyway, here it shows that approximately around 2.5 per 1,000 people have been diagnosed with Klinefelter syndrome. And that's a minimized number. And that number is around 0.25% with that condition alone. So I'm just pointing that out there that it's definitely not 0.02% of people who are intersex. You are thinking on a childish level probably. Um, a lot of people ask if there's like some way that people can get pregnant by themselves that means they're intersex or something. But that's not particularly what intersex is. Um, it's actually just being male and female. Is a male no longer male if he's infertile? Is a female no longer female if she's infertile? No. So when you guys talk about fertility and things of that nature, it just doesn't make any sense. What you're saying here is that you don't want to admit that people are born both on a large scale because it makes you uncomfortable and in this last end of it I just want to say it seems narcissistic honestly because all of this issue with transgender people is and all this issue with intersex people is the same thing for you you know it's not about someone's mental health it's not about them being hateful to themselves, having self-hate, body issues, you know, it's none of that. What your issue is, is that they made you uncomfortable. That's narcissistic and sick, and I don't think you're any less sick than a transsexual, honestly. And I honestly think that transgender people are very sick because they mutilate their bodies. So I'm just saying, as far as this whole thing about you blowing up on intersex people like this, it's not a good look. So that's all I have to say. Thanks for watching, everyone. Like and subscribe. Comment down below, and have a great day.